Hey guys, it's Heather from Here She Grows, and I'm really excited. I'm finally going to install my rain chain. So it's a it's a beautiful water feature. And if you're not familiar with rain chains, they're a prettier alternative to a traditional downspout on your eaves. And um, but there are a few things you have to consider when you're installing a rain chain. And before I can ever hang the rain chain, which is the easiest part of this whole thing, I have to think about what's going to happen to the water once it comes off the rain chain. So this rain chain here is 100% copper. My husband got it for me for Christmas from Good Directions. They also offer um, an additional, you can buy a catch basin, a copper bowl to go with this. The copper bowl is not going to fit with, with mine because the way my rain chain is going to hang down, it's too close to the stoop. So I won't be able to, the diameter of the, of the, of the copper bowl, it's just too wide. So I had to think of another way to handle the water situation. If I let the water pool here, I could have erosion issues under my stoop or it could run back into my foundation and next thing you know, we have a seepage issue in the basement and my husband was really concerned about that. He was actually a little apprehensive about getting me the rain chain because he was thinking of all this, all these drainage issues. So I've been working over the last couple months figuring out, okay, how am I going to do this? And I thought the best way to address a rain chain installation, not that installing the rain chain is difficult in any way, it's just how I'm going to manage the water. The most effective way and the prettiest way because it is all about this is my front entrance i want it to be beautiful and the rain chain will play into that i think it'll go with go well with my pagoda which was a crisp which was a birthday present a few years ago but the best way for me to handle the water once it comes down this rain chain is with a dry creek bed and fortunately i have a very short it's a shallow bed so i don't have to run it very far but there are some tricks to make sure that the water runs away and doesn't continue to pool. So I thought that would be a very important thing to address when you're thinking if and when you decide you're going to install a rain chain. You have to have an end plan for where that water is going to go once it comes off the beautiful rain chain because if it ends up just pooling at the bottom, you end up having, you could have some really serious drainage issues. Right now I have this elbow that comes down and takes the water along the side of the porch here into the corrugated, um, extension tubing that runs the water all the way out into the front yard. So what I'm going to do is take, eventually I'll take this elbow off, but first I'm going to dig the trench, but this elbow will come off and the rain chain has the clip that's going to go inside the gutter here and it'll fall down right in front of my front porch. So, and there's not a lot of space here between the, the end of the stoop and where this rain chain is going to be is just a, a few inches, which means I can't put a catch basin like the, the copper bowl that good, good direction sells to go with this. So I'm going to have to come up with my own, my own plan, which was, which is the creek bed. So I'm going to cut out this U, a portion of it here. It'll be fine. And then I also have to dig out, I've got a bunch of turtle heads that have to come out and some alliums that haven't flowered. I've got one that's going to flower here. I might let that go for a little while, but I'm going to dig all this out. I'm going to first lay it out with some tubes, some sort of maybe some, some rope or something just to get the shape of it. And it's going to be about two feet wide and about a foot deep. And I'm going to make the mouth here wider so that it kind of flares out and the water will disperse into the grass then, which is where it's going now anyway with this tube that goes all the way to the end. So this is the mess of everything I dug up. So I pulled out a lot of daffodils and some hookahs in here, and then my old drain pipe is here. But anyway, um, to lay out the shape, I used an old rope that I had, and that comes in really handy. You could use a rope or uh, some hose, whatever you have to lay it out, or even extension cord or spray paint. This is just what I had. And so I laid it out, and I've dug it all out here. And so it's roughly about two feet wide by, and a little bit wider at the mouth here, right in here and about a foot deep, although it's a little shallower at the top because I want it to run down. I don't want it to pull back here because then I'll have issues around the stoop here and then going back into the house. So um, a rope really comes in handy for, for getting a good visual of what your dry creek bed is going to look like. So the trench is dug and really important thing to do is make sure you tamp down the soil. So you can use a sledgehammer, you can walk on it, but you want to make sure that the soil is nice and firm before you move to the next step. So they also sell tampers that you can rent from hardware stores or big box stores. Um, I didn't go that route. My soil is really, really solid underneath. So I just walked on it and made sure that the sides were pressed in really well. So that brings me to my next step, and that is to line my trench with a permeable, heavy-duty fabric. And I found some at Home Depot from the Vigoro company. So I'm going to be lining it with this. 
there's different grades of this stuff, so there'll be different thicknesses. This is the one they specify if you're gonna be putting rock on top of it, which is what I'm gonna be doing. This is gonna have a la several layers of rock on it, so this is the best stuff for that. And it allows water to seep through it. So I'm gonna put it in place and tack it in with some landscape fabric pins and a hammer. And then I think that's gonna be it for tonight. Uh, tomorrow I'll do, the, I'll do the rock part and I'll take you through that. So I'm in place and now I'm just going to get my hammer and my pins and start tapping it in. So my fabric is down, I've got it all tacked in, and my next step is to get the base layer of rock in. And I'm just using another Vero product from Home Depot, it's called All Purpose Rock. I'm not using pea gravel for the base layer because pea gravel is too smooth and it'll, it'll wash away. So the All Purpose Rock has very rough edges on it and that'll lock together and it'll stay in place, which is what you want. You don't want this rinsing out. So that's just gonna be my base layer. It's not a pretty rock, it's not meant to be seen. So that's gonna be beneath the pretty rock that's gonna go in place as my last step. So my next step is I'm trimming out my dry stream bed and I chose some really beautiful bluestone chips and I'm trying to lay it out in as regular a pattern as, but not really even a pattern. I'm just kind of piecing things together the way I think it looks nice. And one of the things I wanted to make sure I did is have a piece that jutted out from beneath this pagoda and then running it very irregularly along each side and just fitting it together as I go. So I've kind of dry fitted this side and I'm using these um, imperial rocks I found at Home Depot. They sell bags of them. They're all different colored rocks. And as I put pieces in place to, for the pieces that are, that are kind of like a ledge, I'm using these rocks to prop up so that it stays that way. And it's a nice solid base with this gravel underlayment and the uh, colorful rock on top and then trimmed out with the bluestone. So I'm just gonna keep laying it together until I finish. Hey guys, so I'm back and if you've noticed a few costume changes, you're right. I've filmed this over a course of several days. We've had some weather and then we've had some street resurfacing in the neighborhood. So it's been extremely loud and now wouldn't you know it, it's garbage day. So you might be hearing a truck in the background. But anyway, the rain chain is hung and what a simple, simple process. It was a two-man job. My husband got up on the roof for me and uh, removed the elbow that's co that comes off the existing gutter and then simply dropped the clip uh, well, I should go back and explain to you my rain chain. So the rain chain is from a company called Good Directions. It's 100% copper. Their standard lengths are eight and a half feet long. So, and it comes with a hanging clip and you simply insert the clip into your, your existing gutter and it drops down into the, the sleeve that's there. And then there's a hook that comes with it as well. So then the hook goes on that anchoring clip and then you simply just hang your rain chain from it. So standard lengths are eight and a half, half feet long and they come in two finishes. So I chose the polished, the shiny copper, which will events, eventually patina and have that beautiful verdigris finish that you see in copper. You can also buy it already with the verdigris, verdigris finish, um, but this will age up and be beautiful. And I love it the, as it is right now, as a matter of fact. But my issue was um, I have about a nine foot drop from the gutter to the ground. So, and the copper rain chain is eight and a half feet. So I had to figure out how I could make up for that, that bit of space so that I could connect something to it. And a rain chain bowl that you could order from Good Directions wasn't gonna work because I think it's a 16 inch diameter. And the distance from where the rain chain would hang down to my stoop is only a few inches, maybe four inches. So I couldn't do a rain chain bowl. So what I found was a rain chain anchoring stake from a company called Nutshell. And I'll put those, the links to all the products that I'm using here today uh, in the notes. 
But what that allows me, me to do is anchor it in the ground so I'm not going to have a rain chain that's, that's swaying in the breeze and all over the place if we, we get some wind. And the anchoring stank is like a, a big screw and you simply twist it into the ground to the depth you need it. It's about, tw uh, about a foot long and it comes with another foot of copper chain attached to it. And what we noticed that we took a screwdriver and ran it through the eye of the stake so that it gave us some leverage as we're twisting it. And hey Liz! And, uh, and um, so you run the, the screwdriver through the eye and you can twist it into place to the depth you want it. And we ended up twisting it all the way into the ground and then we didn't end up having to use all of those links of chain that came with the stake. We removed most of it and only had to use a couple links. And copper is very bendable, so we were able to bend it around the uh, copper chain and connect it. So now it's not going anywhere. And now I just have to wait for it to rain. So uh, I'm tickled with this project. And um, I hope if you're thinking about adding a rain uh, water feature, rain chains are a great, beautiful accent. So thanks for watching guys and all the links to the products that I used in this video are in the notes below. And thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a great day.